Hi, I'm Yasmin Abdu and I'm from the United Kingdom. I want to help people to make sustainable grocery choices by using artificial intelligence to show them how green their choices are compared to present alternatives. The Generation Connect Young Leadership Programme is, as the name probably suggests, about connections and leadership. Launched last year by the UN's International Telecommunication Union and by Huawei, 30 fellowships were awarded to young people, giving them the chance to turn their creative, digital, community-driven ideas into practical reality. And since they come from all four corners of the globe, that's pretty good news for the rest of us. Health, education, agriculture, governance, all of these are projects and solutions in the making. And frankly, the United Nations of the world could certainly do with a few of those. Well, we're here in Geneva this week for the inaugural boot camp of the program. And we're gonna be featuring six of those projects, showing off a range of the regional innovations on offer. And the second up in our series is Yasmin from the United Kingdom. So I help customers make sustainable grocery choices by using a database to assign traffic light ratings to different products based on how green they are compared to present alternatives. So how do you do that? How do you ascertain that? So we've collected data on product mileage, so land, sea and air, uh, growing methods, uh, packaging, different types of packaging. We've looked at product emissions themselves and based on that we have a drop down menu attached to a supplier form which suppliers already fill out at supermarkets. So you basically put in the drop-down menu, uh, select the drop-down menu options, mm -hmm. and based on that, it would give you a traffic light rating based on how green it is compared to other existing uh, options. And so presumably the goal is to make, is to pressurise producers to make them greener? Absolutely. In the long term, we're looking to green out the supply chain and encourage people to make sustainable choices. And how are you getting the data for all this? Is it from the producers themselves then? The drop-down menu, yes, but the numbers is me and a few other data scientists. So I'm a chemical engineer by background, which means I can develop mathematical models in my sleep. Um, so it's consistent. That's handy. Of, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Uh, I developed a lot of mathematical models. I had it validated by different data scientists. I've got a few data scientists on my team working with me on that um, aspect of things. And that is, it took a while. It's so many data points. Is it, uh, so it's been quite a challenge to get to where you have got already. Absolutely, because if we don't get the data right, it could compromise the whole entire project. So what inspired you to do that then with a chemical engineering background? Why, why this? Why a sort of more green focus? Okay, this is, this is a bit of a funny story actually. So my Greek yogurt was sold out one day at my favorite supermarket. And you know when you buy a very specific brand. Um, so I really wanted Greek yogurt and I went for coconut yogurt instead. And then I really loved it and I adopted it as my new favorite product. Uh, so then I was like, okay, what if we can encourage people to try sustainable alternatives in hopes that they find a greener, a more sustainable option as their new favorite. So that is what inspired me. So too. Greek yogurt inspired you Greek this yogurt entire inspired project. the entire project. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what difference do you think and what benefit, what value can the ITU and Huawei bring through this program to help you overcome what may be technological challenges in future? I guess we are facing a couple of technological challenges, uh, specifically with the algorithms. Mm. So we've got an AI algorithm and we've got two different algorithms as well how we assign the traffic light ratings to different products, because I'm just not gonna sit there and be like, oh, this is red, I think this is yellow and that's green. Uh, there won't be the most exact, accurate ratings yeah. you can find. Um, so I help with the algorithm, the technical aspect of things, just developing, because I'm not a technical person, I'm a chemical engineer. I guess exposure as well, mm. um, just help with making introductions to different people and partnerships, because the best way this can be implemented is at a larger scale, where we can really significantly impact like, um, the, the world emissions and reduce them. Well, that sort of goes on to my last question, actually, which is what is the ideal outcome with this in a sort of five year time frame or a 10 year time frame? Where do you see this going ideally? So the main reason I started this, like, the goal was that I realized we have so much power with our choices that we make to disrupt and reshape entire food supply chains. Um, so in five years time, I hope to cause that shift so by taking small sustainable actions, like swapping um, dairy milk for oat milk in your coffee, if you drink coffee twice a, 
a day. Mm. You can, if the whole UK does that, we can save 10.9 million, million tons of CO2 every year. And on a larger scale, it's a massive difference. And it's exactly what Carbon Track is all about. Small, sustainable choices, when done as collectively, can make a huge difference to what... So what you're doing is effectively making sure people have that information yes, absolutely. in order to make those small yes, steps. Yes, because we've never been given the information. So essentially, we just go by the usual products. Uh, but we have a great reward system as well. So nobody will end up spending extra money. But supermarkets will end up making more. Food, wake, food waste will go down. Um, we reduce world emissions and customers increase the royalty card um, rewards through a rewards multiplier system based on how green you shop compared to... So this is a win for people. everyone? It's a win for everyone and it's a win for me too.